Yeah, yep. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Rod Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, and um, I'm an athletics coach. Um, I coach a few girls here, Harley and Adele, and um, and uh, it was nice that John has asked me to uh, give you a bit of an idea of how we go about getting faster with a better sprint technique. Um, there are a few more girls jo joining. Hi there. So if I can ask one question, how do you think we get faster? If you want to answer, raise your hand. Give us an idea. Yes, Adele? Uh, yep. Yes, you can answer first, Adele. If we practice, we get the practice. right Practice. That's right. Um, yes, uh, uh, who else has got an answer for me? Or who else has got a question? Or how do you think we get faster? All right, I'll give you an idea. Yes. Yes, the girl in the yellow. Sorry, what was your name? Um, Ruby. Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Hi. Um, you work on your technique. You certainly do. You, you certainly do. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so the difference between soccer and athletics is we don't have a lot of efficiency when we run. We all during our training for technique for athletics, we try and work on efficiency. But with soccer, it's about getting to the ball or getting to the area where we need to go to as fast as we possibly can. And a lot of girls don't do that as well as they possibly should. So there are a few things that we can do to try and get better and get faster. All right. So one thing that we do need to get faster is we need to apply force to the ground. People think that if we lengthen our stride, we'll get faster. The idea is to apply force to the ground and shorten your stride. Okay? So everyone's everyone's got a different ability. I mean, everyone's got a, a different frame. Um, some are taller, some are smaller. The smaller people have got shorter stride length. The taller girl has got a um, longer stride length. The idea is to find that balance we where we are getting a where we are getting a lot more rotation within our stride length. We are we are turning over our legs faster and faster and faster. The more times that our feet hit the ground, the faster we we're, we're going to go. If we're spending too much time with a long stride length, both our feet are going to be in mid air and we're not able to strike the ground and apply force where it matters where we can get faster. Um, what I would like you to do, if possible, is go back to an area where you're able to, um, like Adele, you need to go back to your backyard, uh, up into your front yard. Okay, so just for a moment. Now, if I um, will, um, well, if you can bring your iPads with you or not, no. Okay, so what I want you to do is stand up nice and tall for me. Yep, yep. okay, so. Stand up nice and tall, and what I need you to do is I want you to um, to um, uh, take – think about – think about um, think about starting a race, and I want you to um, – so, Harley, if you can face it the other way. If you're running to my left, so turn it the other way, Harley. Don't run towards the camera. Yes, that's right. Okay, so what I need you to do is – Start running fast, and I just want you to take a few steps. All right. So if, when I click my, when I say go, all I want you to do is run and take a few steps, and I just want to see what your technique is. Okay. On the count of three, one, two, three, go. Good. Okay. Come back again, and do that again for me. So. That's it. Okay, so on the count of three, I just want you to run as fast as you can by taking a few steps forward. All right. Three, two uh, – so, sorry, before I say this, I want you to stand well balanced. Well balanced with both feet together. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. Now, on the count of three, I just want you to run um, forward for a few steps. Three, two, one, go. Good. 
All right, walk back to where you started. All right. From what I saw, everyone did, I mean, everyone did well. If you can go back to where you started from, if you can go back, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. So the idea is most people, when they start running from a standing start or a small, or from a small jog, is it they go back before they go forward? Okay. So if I was to say go, most people would go back before they go forward. So what this, what they, what they're trying to do is that they're trying to provide power with their dominant leg to go forward. Okay. So what? So basically, what they do, if I can stand up, they go back and then they go forward. Okay. What I saw most of you guys do just now is you fall forward. So what I want you to do now is go back to where you were. Yep. And I want you to be well balanced with both feet. And I want you to fall forward. And no, um, Ruby, no, just well balanced, Ruby. Just, do, yeah, well balanced like that. Good. Now, what I want you to do is fall as if you're going to fall on the ground without the help of your arms. And what will happen is the dominant leg will take over. The brain will think, I need some help here. I will need some support. I need to I need to I need to provide some support with my dominant leg. So when I say go, I want you to fall forward as far as you can. Okay? All right. Three, two, one, fall forward. And go. Good. And that first step, everyone, has to be aggressive. So let's try that again. All right. Let's try that again. I want you to fall as far forward as you possibly can. And then what will what will happen? Your dominant leg will take over. And then I want that first step to be aggressive. Not long. I want it to be aggressive. All right. Three, two, one, go. Good. Okay. So when you're running along with your opponent on the soccer field, if the ball's in your area or getting to, to or getting towards you, what will happen is that if you can do that or if you can practice that concept by falling forward and then getting a fast rotation with your feet or legs, what your opponent will do, she'll go back before she'll go forward. All right? And then you might be able to gain half a metre on her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so go back to your air. Right, so I want the first two steps to be really aggressive. All right, I want you to stand, I want you to stand well balanced and fall, fall as far as you can and the dominant leg will, will take over. All right, okay. Three, two, one, go. Fast. Good. Good. It's very hard to be doing it, to be doing it on Zoom and not giving you um, the right myth, uh, the right sort of language. But if you can understand what I'm uh, saying, most opponents that you'll be running with on the soccer field, if you're running slow with them, they will go back before they go forward. So, John, if you can stand there, you're doing that quite well. If you can stand back where we were, and if everyone can watch John, like John. Don't do it the way I've just asked you. Go back to the old way. Go back before you go forward. So, for example, if, yes, see that? So, okay, so can everyone see John? So, John, do that again. So, hang on. Go back, go back before you go forward. So, hang on. One, two, three, go. Good. Now, if John can do it the way that I've asked him, do it, do it the way I've just showed you, John. All right? One, two, three, go. Fast. All right. And so when John gets back into the picture, John, try not to make that first step too long. Make it short. Because that because that then starts the process rolling. Okay, let's do it again, John. One, two, three. Not that small. Yes. Yes. All right. Start off nice and fast. One, two, three, go. Fast. Yes. Rather than, rather than, um, 
going back before you go forward. So if you're running with an opponent very slowly, if the ball's, um, you know, 15, 20 metres away and, you, and what you're watching the ball, when the ball starts to get into your vicinity, then you can apply that process and you'll be able to make up You'll be able to make up half a metre because I know for a fact that that opponent of yours will go back before she goes forward. All right? So that's one thing that we can practice on. All right? That's one thing that we're going to practice on. Now, stride length. The, the thing that people believe is that they think that if they lengthen their stride, they'll go faster. All right. That's that exactly the opposite. We need to have a well balanced stride length and we need to be able to apply force into the ground. Force produces power and power and power produces speed. So if you can go to um so Amelia, what I want you to do is go to the very corner of your front yard. Yep, go to the very corner. And I want you to no, go to the very corner. Keep going. No, to the very corner to your left, is it? Yes. And I want you to run towards me. Adele, uh, sorry. Um, so if you can hear me, I want you to run quite fast with... Oh, she can hardly... I want you to run quite fast with a shortened stride length. So when I say shortened stride length, I don't want you to shorten it too much. I just want you to shorten it by, say three, four, or five centimetres. So how so how far is a centimetre? It's not very far at all. So if you can, yeah, so if you can shorten your stride by a few centimetres, that will then help the rotation of your feet, of your legs. All right, so, so, uh, so can you go back to the corner of the uh, yard for me? Yep. And when I say go, start running forward. Yep. Three, two, one, go. If you, yep. All right. So all we need to do is rotate those legs going forward with a shortened of stride, and you'll be amazed with how quick, quick you go. So if we can, so John, if you can go back all the way to the end there, I believe if you can go back, Ruby, if, um, if you can face side on and, and start running, uh, and start running. So if you want to go back to where you were, yep. Okay. So, yep, ha, huh. Haley. yeah, okay, all right. So, all I want you to do is practice shortening your stride by a few centimetres, okay? Yep, and you'll feel the difference because it's probably something that it, um, isn't natural. You're, you are used to um, running with the same stride length. So just try and shorten your stride two or three centimetres, all right? On the count of three, I'll get you to do it. Yep. One, two, three, off you go. Good. All right, let's go back and do that again, guys. All right, let's go back and do that again, okay? All right. So... On the count of three, one, two, three, off you go. Good. Are you trying to um, shorten your stride by a few centimetres? Yep. Yeah. Does it feel any different, Amelia? Can... Are you able to hear me, Amelia? Yeah. Are I mean, you feeling any different? Okay. So what... What that does, if you can shorten your stride, that'll rotate the legs and then that will bend the knees. And those bent knees helps produce power as well. Okay? So let's go back and try it again, if you don't mind. All right? Really try and shorten your stride. Okay. Hang on. Wait till everyone's ready. Okay. Shorten it by a few centimetres. Three, two, one, go. Good. Good. Okay. How's it feeling, John? Is it feeling all right? 
Oh, yeah, lo 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 it's like a little engine going really fast, like lots oh, of touches it. on the ground. Okay, so um, the other thing that we can work on is that if we can practice that as well as getting our arms going, because whether you, I don't know whether you know this or not, the arms control our legs. So the faster our arms are going, our legs will go. If we're, um, if our arms are moving slowly, our legs will go, our legs will move slowly. All right. So that's the whole idea. So if our arms are moving really fast, our legs will move fast. All right. And if we can reduce our stride length with that, that will then produce speed. Okay. So can you just stand up? In front of the camera for me yep stand up all right now i want you to start moving your arms like you're running and do it and, and go faster faster okay can you imagine your legs moving that fast yes or no yes okay so so there are a few ways that we can do our arms. Now, because I've been because I've been coaching Adele, she's been doing it, she's doing it really well. But for example, Amelia, you're just going up slowly up halfway. You need to be going all the way up to eye level. All right, all the way up to eye level. All right, because in athletics, guys, we call our we call our arms levers, and levers are long. The longer our arms are, the faster we'll go. All right? Okay, so if we can just stand there now and do that again for me, but it has to be nice and controlled. Good. All right. All right, now try and get faster. Faster again. Good. All right, now just, just stop there for a second. All right, now... The elbows have to come back to a ninety degree. All right, they can't they can't stop there and then go forward. They have to go back to a, a ninety degree because they 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 have to be used like a spring. Yes, very good, John. Don't link, don't straighten that arm out. Yes, all right, good. All right, so if you can face sideways for me, so if I can see your face uh, sideways angle, so if, all right to a ninety degree. Good. All the way back, as far as you, you can. Because if you go all the way back with your elbows, then it's spring-loaded to come forward. If you don't go all the way back with your arms, then then the arms won't go forward uh, automatically. Okay? Good. All right. If you can just face me again for me. All right. So the other thing, too, is... When we're doing it, we've got to try and not sway, not roll our shoulders, okay? We've got to try and keep our shoulders nice and still. We've got to move our arms with our forearms rather than with our shoulders, okay? Our shoulders will move slightly, but not like I've been watching, okay? So if you can just face the camera again for me, all right? And try and keep your shoulders as still as possible, but moving your arms and keeping that elbow bent at a 90 degree. Okay. Yep. Good. Try and – well done, Adele. Good. Ruby, good. Yep. That's better, Amelia. So much better than five minutes ago. Good. Right now, now try and get a bit faster. Good. Well done, Harley. Good. Good. Okay, good. Ruby, a bit too quick. Just make it more, just make it um, all the way back. Good. Okay, so now, if you can, well done, Adele. You can stop that now for a moment. Okay, that was good, all right? So if you, you can imagine ourselves running like that, trying to, get to a, trying to get to a soccer ball, which is 20 metres away, if we've got a smaller stride length, if we're rotating our legs quicker, if we're moving our arms exactly like you just did, we're going to get to the football quicker than our opponent. All right? 
Because don't forget, when you're doing that in relation to your upper body with arms, then you're using a, you're using your arms as efficient as possible, and you're not going and you're not going to waste as much energy as your opponent. All right. So if we can all just go back to the furthest point in our backyard, or our front yard, or our or our driveway. Yeah. All right. And if we can just run a bit faster, shortening our stride, moving our arms as fast as we can, all right, with a 90 degree. Three, two, one, go. Good. It's so difficult to be able to do that drill when there's no room in the front yard or backyard. I understand that completely. All right, but do you understand what I'm trying to trying to uh, relay? Yes, John. Okay, good. All right. Have I got any questions? Any? Have I got any questions anywhere? No. Okay. All right. So, tell me something. What age group of soccer do you play? Under thirteens. Under twelves. We got we got thirty we got thirty twelves, elevens, okay. and maybe and tens. So we got right. a bit a bit of mixture. So we got, one boy, we got one boy who's not on camera as well. Yeah. Right. So I would imagine everyone that at a young age, even though we practice our skill with our with our ball skills, you have to run to the ball rather than the ball being kicked to you. Um, is that right? As you get up into the higher age groups, your teammate is kicking the ball to you rather than you chasing the ball. Okay? So all this time that you've been loving your soccer, you've got to be able to you've got to be able to produce speed to get to the ball that's being kicked to you rather than as you grow up and get into the older age groups, your teammate will have the skill to be able to kick the ball to you. And skill will be able to skill is so important by all means. So so now, uh, by doing some of those things that I've just spent time doing in the last ten minutes or so, there are there there are ways that we can produce speed, um, and we don't have to travel that far. So, for example, how far how far would you run fast in a game of soccer? Like, would you run ten meters? Would you run fifteen meters before you pass the ball off? 10 metres. John's saying 10 metres. So 10 metres isn't that fast before we have to handle, before we have to um, um, get rid of the ball. So from zero to 10, if we can produce smaller strides, faster arms, then you are a big step going forward rather than doing what you normally do. And that's going back before you go forward and trying to run without any sort of um, um, not without any sort of uh, um, strength for, through your upper body and through your arms. All right. Okay. So let's get the uh, soccer balls out for the moment. Have you got a soccer ball? Yep. All right. So. Right, let's break it up for a moment. Let's spend the next five minutes demonstrating some skills. Okay, all right. So, all right. So do your thing for the next two or three minutes. Just, just show me, show me some skills. Well done. Good. Well done, guys. Okay. All right. Everyone's very good, John, aren't they? Everyone's very good with their skills. 
Yes, the ones who are good with their skills are the ones who are dedicated, and the ones who are dedicated are the ones who can turn up. <laughs> They're all oh, like okay. Yes. Well done, Amelia, Ruby. Yeah. Everyone's very good. All right, look at look. Okay, I can understand why they love it because have a look at Haley Gay with her bit with her knees oh. and left foot, right foot. Okay. All right. All right, guys, if you want to come towards the camera again. All right. What do you think, if you can, if you can put your hand up and ask me, um, answer this question if you can. What do you think you need to get better to produce more skills? Yes, Amelia. Practice. Practice, yeah. Harley? Endurance. What's that, sorry? Endurance. Endurance. Yes, Adele? Um, being determined. Being determined, yep. Okay. What if I said to you, as you get older, of course the confidence will come. There's no doubt about it. Maturity comes with confidence. Confidence comes with maturity. A balance, B A L R A N C E, a balance. If you've got balance, then your skill level will continue to get better. Balance is very hard to achieve, though. Balance will come with age and with maturity. But if I can give you now a couple of drills to do to practice your balance, because in those little drills that I saw you now with your, with, um, some people were losing balance with their with their two feet and they were, um, the ball was going left or right or whatever, and it's very hard to continue that balance. You're very good, but if we can learn to hold up the stability of our body, then we'll get – then our balance will get better. Okay, so if you can step away from the camera for a moment so I can see. All right, so – All right, stand on one leg. Stand on one leg. Okay, so have that back leg, have that back leg out, out behind you. Yep, like that bent. Okay, now all I want you to do now is lo is lo go as low to the ground as you possibly can, and then keep going as low as you can. Good, low, low, and then rise up to where you started. Good. All right. This time, I would like you to keep a nice tall posture. So keep a nice tall posture when you do it. Okay. So instead of bending forward from the hips, come down with a nice tall posture. Good. Off you go. Good. And back up again. Good. Right. One more time. See if we can get better. All right. Nice tall posture. And up again. Good. All right. Now try the other leg. All right. Try the other leg. Three, two, one, and go. Low as you can. All right. Some are getting the wobble. Some aren't. Good. Okay. All right. This time, I want you to go back to the other leg that you first did it on. And with the leg that's in the air, I want you to have it forward. All right? Yeah, but bent. But bent at a 90 degrees. That's right. Now, go all the way down again. Keep that leg up in the air. Good. And back up. Good. One more time. Three. Two, one, go. Good. And uh, well done. Okay. Try the other leg. Try the other leg for me. And down you go. Right. Good. Okay. Face me for a second. All right. The older you get and the better you get at it, that leg that's off the ground needs to go a bit straighter rather, um, rather than bent. But, um, but balance is 
huge in relation to creating more skills. If you've got a good balance, then the skills are going to get better before they get worse. And they won't get worse anyway because you're very young. You want to achieve as much as you can. Um, so now what what creates good balance? Anyone can answer that question? What produces good balance? Yes, John. Oh, no, Lila, Lila, you got your hands up. Do you want to come oh, off here, Lila? Yes, Lila. Precision. What's that? Sorry, say, say that again. Precision. Yes, you're right. Okay, so yes, Adele. Yeah. I'm not sure that concentration. Yes, concentration. Yes, Ruby. What produces good balance? Good posture. Good posture. Exa exactly right. Okay. What produces good balance is strength. All right. Strength through the bottom part of your body. So from the hips down. So whenever we do, um, whenever we, uh, we do lots of things to produce strength through the bottom part of the body, and that is called plyometrics. Plyometrics is all about hopping and jumping, all right? So if we can hop over little hurdles, if we can hop on one leg, if we can hop on the other leg, if we can, if we can jump, that produces strength, and then that will then produce a good balance, okay? So I understand that the strength isn't there at the moment, um, considering um, considering that you're only 11 and 12, gee, you're very, very good. So what I would like you to do now is go back to the furthest point in your area, right? Yep, that'll do. Okay, all right. So, okay, so... What I would like you to do is just hop towards the camera, all right? Hop with hop with one leg, John, if you don't mind. Yeah, good. All right, good. All right. So now, just all right. So now, just before you go back to um to where the furthest point of the, your yard is, what I want you to do is hop as far as you can, but then stop. So hop and then and then try and then just stop. All right, stop for about two or three seconds and then hop again. All right, stop. All right, okay. So hop, hop, hop. Good. Okay. So Adele, try good. All right. So John was doing the right thing there and a few others. Adele, you were very quick. So if you can try and what we need to do is stabilize where we finish. So so um, once we've hopped to the area that we've hopped to, then we need to just stop and create um, and build strength through our through our hamstrings and um, glutes. So let's go back there again, right? And let's stop after good, stop, good. Off you go. Good. Good. All right. That's the way. Good. All right. Stop there. Okay. John's still coming. All right. That's it. Well done, John. That was good. All right. So all I'm trying to relay there is if we can create balance – then our skills are going to be far much greater than, than what they are now, all right? And, yes, we're only 11 and 12, but if we can continue to to learn and practice and um, do those kind of plyometrics, like, John, how often would you do jumping over hurdles at training? How often would you do that kind of thing? All right. Can you tell me, John, before you actually start a soccer training, what sort of things do you do in relation to warming up? So, so we, we pretty much do with the balls, little and small games. Yep. And then if we're a bit more advanced, we might do some dynamic stretches while we're waiting, right? Like yep. a open the glass, shut the door. 
but we tend right. pretty much from 13 down to, to everything with a ball and slowly ramp it up to warm yeah. the body, but not really. Um, um, I mean, sometimes before the games, we might do some warm up where they're doing working on the ACLs, like the hop one and jumping yeah. into each other, but it, it's pretty. Uh, yeah. For that young age group, it's uh, we, we don't do that at all, really. So, Adele, can I ask you this question? What's the big difference between what we do at training with with regard to warming up and then doing the session at athletics and then you go to soccer? Um, what's the big difference that you notice? Um, the big difference is we do a big warm-up, structured, and yep. we do, like, with everyone and we all do the same thing, like, yeah, yes. It's structured and we do a big warm up. Um, in soccer, it's normally like mini games. You start off a little bit of a warm up, but they're different types of warm ups. Yep. One's just like to get the body warmed up, and the other like to stretch yep. your muscles. For sure. Yes. Haley, is it? Harley. Harley. Also- Harley, sorry. And also at athletics, we do the same thing every week, whereas at soccer, it's different every week. Like every so it's, so sort of, so sort of a, the soccer's training isn't as structured? It, it's not the same thing. So that at athletics, we do, we do the same warm-up every week, pretty much. Whereas at soccer, it's different every week. Right, okay. Yeah, all right. So not that there's anything wrong with that, right? The variety is a good thing. But I do believe that it has to be sort of structured. You know, like um, when you come to training, that you, you know you're going to start off with some skipping. And I've and I've actually forgot about skipping. Um, Adele, why do I get you to do skipping so much at athletics? Um, skipping uh, for, like, legs. What was it? Legs. Like hops. Yep. And... Um, the reason why, thanks Adele, the reason why I ask you to do so much skipping at athletics training, and this is probably something, John, that you can um, um, use sk- to to actually run well on a track or run well or be fast, you've got to be light on your feet. And skipping, whether it's with a skipping rope or whether, whether it's just sk- skipping by yourself, you bounce from the from the top half of your foot rather than the whole foot, right? You don't bounce with the whole of the foot. You only use the top half of your foot to to, to bounce. So it's a smaller, similar um, trait to, with, plyo, with plyometrics. Um, so so it, it, it creates trying to be light on, on your feet. So what I want you to do is go back to the furthest point in your area, and all I want you to do is skip. Skip naturally. Off you go, Amelia. Skip. Alternate feet. Alternate feet, is it? Alternate alter feet. Yes, good. Yeah. Right, good. Off you go, Amelia. No, no. Skipping, not with the skipping rope, uh, Ruby. Just go from one corner to another with your yard. Off you go again. Good. Okay, now I want you to. Good. No. You weren't doing that right, John. Skip like a girl. Uh, let me watch the girls skip. Yes, okay. Watch the girls skip. <laughs> All right. Uh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh. All right. That's it. All right. Good. All right, if we can stay there for a moment. That's better, John. All right. So this time, when you do it again for me, I want you to get really bouncy. All right. Every time you, every time you land, and every time your feet hit the ground, I want you to bounce in the air rather than just move forward. So, so sort of skip a bit higher rather than go forward. All right. So get bouncy. Off you go. Good. Good. Get bouncy, 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 bouncy. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, all right. It's not about moving fast. Okay, good. All right, stop there for a while. Stop there for a minute. Okay. So, skipping from my point, the purpose and the reason I use skipping is not because 
yes, I'm mean, actually warms up the joints by all means. But I'm not asking you to go fast. I'm actually want you. I'm watching. I'm wanting you to get bouncy. So I'm watching. I'm wanting you to bounce from the ankles, right? So a lot of things that we do is we involve our hamstrings and our glutes to produce strength. I want you to bounce from your ankles, which is basically bouncing from bouncing from your Achilles. So um, if we can bounce. Yeah. So, so next time you, so if you can go back to the furthest point in your um, and bounce from your ankles rather than bounce from with your hamstrings. All right. Stay there, Amelia, and watch if you want. No, no, no. So, good. So, good. So, Adele, 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 when you do it. Smaller steps, all right? I want you to create height rather than length when you bounce, all right? Okay, so let's try, let's watch Adele if we can. Is she there? Okay, off you go. Yep. Okay, good, all right? All I'm, all I'm trying to suggest here or trying to sort of um, advise everyone is basically – we need bounce rather than we need. We don't need to skip long. We need to just create bounce and height. That will actually provide being light on your feet. All right, um, because the lighter we are with our stride length and our and our um, and our force, the quicker we are with our rotation of legs. All right. So now. Let's go back and see if we can do what we can. So we'll go back to the very first thing that we uh, I spoke about. So we talk about stride length. So let's shorten the stride length by two or three or four centimetres. And before we go back, I also want you to have a nice tall posture when you run. And when you're running with your arms, we're moving our forearms forward rather than our shoulders, all right, at a 90 a degree, okay? All right, so let's go back. All right, three, two, one, off you go. Fast, good, good. Well done, Adele, that was good. Okay, all right. Um. So, so let's let's try something else from that. If we need to run fast, we need to produce force, and that is hitting the ground faster with power. So we just need to produce. We we need to have a flexible. We need to have flexion in our knees. All right. So let's just try and create a bent knee as we do it. All right. But going, but moving everything like I've just asked. All right. So yeah. If you can head back, all right. All right, so can you move? All right. Three, two, one, off you go. Good. Well done. That was a lot better. Yes. Well done, Adele. John, well done. Amelia, good. All right. Can everyone just stay there? So, Adele, can you go back to the uh, fence? And I want I want everyone to watch Adele. All right, she's been she's been doing this for a fair time, and she's pretty good at it. All right, off you go, Adele. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you notice with Adele rather than a few others? The one thing that she, one thing that Adele has, and she's been learning this for a long time. Her other body doesn't move. It's just her arms. All right, and her legs, of course, but it's all very structured. It's all very neat and tidy. I mean, if that's the right phrase to use. All right, but one thing that we need to just think about when we run fast is smaller strides, a tall posture, and we need to be able to produce force into the ground so that we need to have some flexion with our knees, all right? So we can actually have a bent knee. Don't over-exaggerate it, of course, but just be able to 
um, produce power. All right. So let's do it one more time for me. All right. Let's go back as far as we can. All right. All right. All right. Three, two, one, off you go. All right. Good. That was well done. Um, one thing that um, happens is that I've been talking to you, um, I've been talking to you for the last half hour now, and I've been asking you to, you know, um, straighten your back, shorten your strides, have a 90 degree angle in your arm. There's too many things to think of. Um, so the mind is, it's very difficult for their brain to understand what's going on. Um, so it's a matter of just learning one thing after another, you know, making sure one thing is right and then moving on to the next and then moving on to the next again. All right. Um, but if you, um, having, having a nice tall posture and having a nice arms is all about being efficient but getting speed is all about your legs, all right? So you can have the worst um, technique in the world, but if, you're, but if your legs are moving fast and if your arms are moving fast, then that's all you need, all right? Because you see a lot of ugly runners, but as long as they're moving fast, then that's what matters, all right? All right? Um, the reason why we ask you to, to to be efficient with your upper body is so we need to save energy, all right? Um, so you're not going to be as tired as you would if you had a very terrible technique over um, on the upper body, all right? But we produce power by by providing force to the ground and a quicker rotation with your legs. So whenever people come up to you and asks and ask, how do you run fast? Shorter strides. All right. One question I've got for you. You hear about people doing a lot of gym work and getting and eating well and um, having a good core. What is, why do people, why should people, why do people say that? What's the, what's the importance of, of having a good core? Can anyone answer that? What's the importance of having a good core? You know, like having a six pack. Yes, Amelia. I like body position. Yes. Good. Yes, Adele. Um, to keep your body upright when you're right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. You hear a lot of different answers yes john are you there no, no, I, was, I was going to say stability but maybe to make yes. the body stable i don't know very much right, right okay the number one importance of having a good core is to protect your spine all right so if we've got a good um, if we've got a nice straight spine all the way down our back then our nervous system is going to be working as healthy as could be all right but if we've, but if we haven't got a nice tall posture, if our if our core um, isn't strong, over time what will happen is that that spine will get lazy and start to start to fall a bit forward. All right. So the so the most important thing is having a good core, having a good posture, and having that spine or the nervous system work as well as possibly work as well as can be. The other thing is, I've, I've, just, I've just lost my train of thought there for a second. All right, stretching. What's the importance of stretching? Anyone got it? Yes, yes, Harley. After you do an exercise or something, your muscles don't hurt after or the next day. Yep, very good. There is no wrong answer here. What's the importance of stretching? No? So okay. So you don't um, hurt yourself? Yes, that's right. Okay. So the importance of stretching is exactly what you've just said. We need some flexibility in our tendons. All right? 
because if they're highly primed, like my theory on why AFL footballers and why really fit sportsmen or women pull soft tissue injuries or um, what they do, and the reason why they do that is because their hamstrings are highly strung. There's no flexibility. It needs it needs to be able to it needs uh, um, we need to be able to um, have a bit of flexibility in there. So so um, so that's the so we need we need them we need it to be very very uh, strong from the um, hamstrings. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you with flexibility, did you know that if you don't stretch now, when you get to the age of twenty five, you'll lose the art to get flexible. The body will not be able to get as flexible as what it is now. So in John's case, John is losing the art of being able to get flexible. All right? He can stretch until the cows come home, but flexibility won't be one of his uh, – won't be able to be produced. But as a young child and growing into your teens, the more stretching that you do, the more flexible you will get because the – Tendons and the muscles will be able to stretch. Uh, right? hey, Rod, yeah, Rod, yeah, shimmy. I'm not twenty. Uh, I'm older than twenty-five. <laughs> what, made you, what made you think that? <laughs> but 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 sort of yeah. But the more you stretch now as a child and a teenager, the more flexibility you'll have in your muscles and your tendons. All right. But if you don't stretch now, then you'll find that when you do stretch, it'll, the process will just take longer. So what are some of the stretches that we might be able to do at home, sitting on the couch, um, sitting on the floor, watching TV? Hamstring stretches, you can calf hold stretches, a hold a plank. Yeah. Be careful of your back with the planks, um, Harley. Be careful of your back, especially your lower back when, when, you're, doing, um, when you're doing the planks. But... Yeah, that's more for that's more for strength. So in relation to, to stretching, if you're just sitting down on the um, the floor watching a bit of TV, all you need to do is do a hamstring stretch. All you need to do is be able to hold that stretch. So let's all sit down on the ground for uh, for a moment, if we can. So sit down on the ground. Yep. Let's sit sit down on the ground. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now. Show me a good hamstring stretch. Off you go. Hamstring stretch. No, Amelia, that's a quad stretch. That's quads. No, that is... No, Adele, that's not a hamstring stretch. Okay, so one foot forward, that's exactly, that's a hamstring stretch, Adele. Yes, all right. So, um, yes, Amelia, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Um, John, John, that's... No, so the one where you you put one leg into the other. Yep. Good. All right. So let's hold that stretch for about ten seconds. Off you go. Good. Uh, Amelia, you're very flexible. Good. Yep. All right. Okay. That's the way. Good. All right. So of all I'm saying there in relation to stretching, if you remember to stretch at home, it doesn't matter if you do the stretch exactly correct. All you need all you need to do is just feel that stretch in that particular muscle that you're trying to stretch. All right? Okay. So the ones that are really important are quads, hammies, and glutes. What's the biggest muscle in the body? Glutes. That's right. Okay. Good. All right. Any questions, guys? Any questions, Amelia? What's one thing that you find hard with soccer? Is it skill? Is it um, fitness? What's one of your 
Yep. Yep. Just keep on running. Right? Yep. But you don't necessarily have to run fast, though, do you, all the time? Um, is that right, Holly? Yeah, you've got to be able to run, even if it's just jogging around the field. Yes, that's right. Um, is anyone else having a difficult time with uh, endurance? No? What are, what, are, what are some other things that you find hard? Because as a coach, what a coach does, yes, a coach talks about how magnificent the athlete is and how well he or she is going, but we always look on how to improve things. So, so, so one thing that you can possibly do to say to John, and John could pass it on to your coach, is say, what things are we all finding difficult? Let's try and work on a few of these things. Like, like Harley's finding it difficult with her endurance. She needs to spend a, probably a bit more time, sort of um, doing more, doing more aerobic things. It doesn't necessarily have to be running, Harley. All right. Because running can put a strain on on all your ligaments, on all your muscles, and all that sort of stuff, especially running on hard surfaces. All right, it can be swimming, it can be it can be um, lots of other things in in with relation to a low impact. All right, running is high impact. Low impact is all about getting on a stationary bike, swimming. All right, so that's one thing that you probably might want to try and do. You know, have you got a bike access? that you can use, Harley? I don't have, like, a stationary bike, but I've got a bike. Yep, all right. And it's just a matter of organising your day, spending half an hour and figuring out what you can do to improve your deficiencies. Like, Adele, what's one of the things that you find difficult, whether it's athletics or whether it's soccer? Um... Probably endurance too. Endurance too. Like but see, keeping like going around the field, like because even if you're a midfielder too, yeah, definitely because yep. you pretty much are everywhere on the field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're seeing a so you're seeing a common trend here, John, um, with the length of uh, time it takes to finish it off a, so uh, a soccer match. Um, um, the kids are slowly running all the time, um, and it's difficult because the endurance side of the fitness hasn't been trained in to them. Um, all right. So, Amelia, what do you find difficult with soccer? Um, enforcing a skill into the game. Enforcing a skill into the game, like of a new skill that haven't you haven't been taught. No, like when you're running, I I find it hard to do the skill. Right. Yeah. So what Amelia is saying, what Amelia is saying there, the faster she's doing it, the harder it is to do. Because the body's got to be able to slow down, think about what's happening, how do we actually achieve the skill? So I always say to my athletes when I'm coaching on the track, to perform a skill, you need to slow down to perform it well. All right, and practice that so many times, and then try and quicken the process up by getting it faster. Like Adele, when we do a crossovers at athletics training, you know, when we do the a crossovers, a lot of people within my squad have difficulty doing. It. Um, Adele, if you can just show me some crossovers so the other kids can understand what's going on there. All right, so you know the crossover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So watch Adele if you don't mind, guys. Yep. Off you go. No, 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 no. The other one, Adele. You know, when you go from... Grapevine? Yes, a grapevine. Yes, a grapevine. Sorry. Off you go. That's it. Good. All right. So, that grapevine exercise, guys, is, an ex is a drill to um, warm up your hip flexors. All right. So the idea, the front leg that's going over needs to be nice and high. A lot of people can't get the concept of doing that or the body isn't allowing it to do that. So I basically tell my athletes, let's start off with the, let's start off walking and then slowly jogging and then hopefully it gets better. What as we go? 
Um, any other problems that people might have with their training or their um, or their soccer? No, no. All right. So with finishing, with speed, can can you tell me why or what drills can we do to get faster? Adele. Um, stretches and like reflexes. Yep. Like okay. Harley, what can we do to get faster? Um, you can um, if you've got like a step or something, to as in put both your feet like run onto the step and backwards. If that makes sense, like um. Yep. Up and then back. That's right. Up and then Good. Back. All right. Is there a step there? So Ryan, is it? Um, is it Ryan on the top right? Sorry, Aaliyah. Uh, sorry, so Ruby. It? There's Ruby, Ruby, and Dana. Yep. Dana. The. Uh, Dana. 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 Are so there any things that I've shown in the last hour that 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 you might use when you're trying to run fast? Turn on oh, like, backwards and to go like forward. Yep. Good. All right. So just to go over it again, to produce speed when you're running, it's not necessarily lengthening the stride. It's shortening the stride so the rotation of the feet are turning over nice and quick. All right? And, as, and if we've got a nice tall posture, then our legs, our knees will be bent to a certain point where we can produce power and that will produce force. All right? And there's no doubt about it. If you do that, then you'll cover the ground pretty quickly. And the other thing that I showed you earlier on in the or earlier on in the video was that, that that falling forward rather than going back and then going forward. All right? So if we're running slowly with an opponent and the ball is coming in our direction, if we can fall forward with our dominant leg rather than going back, that'll gain half a metre or a foot or, you know, or whatever the case may be, all right? And then you'll have that advantage of getting faster to where you have to be, all right? These are little things that um, not a lot of people know of um, because the brain just, when it wants to go fast, it wants to produce power so it goes back to get some flexion in the knee to go forward, to get power. All right. Any more questions on that? That was what great, Rob. What do you think, John? It was fantastic. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, talk to you how we maybe get you back more officially when the season starts, because I, I think even the even uh, little bits that you were able to share with us, I think it will make if we can integrate it in, we'll make because speed is so cru crucial in football yes. or soccer, right? Um, it's very difficult, girls, yeah. to be able to do it on Zoom. It's it's so much more beneficial to do it live, to do it at a, uh, a training session because because uh, yes, I can watch, but I can't see those little things that are happening. But in every sport that you do, whether it's soccer, athletics, basketball, you need speed when you're running a marathon. You need speed doing anything you want. And the other thing that we didn't go on about, and I can possibly do it in another forum like this later on, but it's a, a reaction. How quick does it take you to react? All right? A reaction is all about responding to something that you need to react to. All right? Some people are slow. Some people, it takes a, it takes a fair bit of time to react. Like... Sorry, Adele. When the gun goes off in a hundred meter race, how long does it take you to react? Um, I need to get a bit better at that. That's right. But hey, boy, she fast. Yep. She reacts as fast as she possibly can. All right, and she's still telling me that she needs to get faster, and possibly she does, but she's only eleven. All right, and that'll happen with growth and maturity and development. All right. So you've got to, you know, look. Reaction is all about reacting to something. And if we can react 
to a ball that's going to be kicked out to the left wing or to the right wing and knowing what's going to happen, then where we actually reading the play are reacting with speed. All right. I think my time is done, guys. What do you think? I yes, hope I yes. pleased you. I, I hope you haven't got too bored. I saw a couple of people falling asleep there for a while. You, it's very hard to it's very hard to pay attention. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. You're so, right, Rod. We appreciate it. So, um, so what I would like to do, John, if it's okay, is speak to you off this, you know, during the week and sort of because it's very because it'd be a shame to do one session like this and then not follow it up. Yeah, no, no. Let, let's continue. I'll, I'll get you on WhatsApp, and then we'll, we'll think through. Yeah. Because I, I want to, I, I want the from a girls' program, a more holistic, lots of different ideas, trying, yeah. trying to be more uh, innovative in, in what we do. So, yeah, this is good. Right. I'm glad we got to experience your your style, your coaching yeah. style, is, 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 and you connected well with the girls too. You, you, obviously, yeah. you, you teach kids and uh, well, so that was good. That, 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 that right. shared. Thank you. So, one thing, one thing before I go. What's one thing that we do well in when it comes to soccer? What's one? Everyone's got to have a bit. Everyone's got to have a bit of. Um, everyone's got to be acknowledgeable or acknowledged in what they do. So, for example, I love to coach. I love coaching. Adele loves her athletics and her soccer. Harley loves both as well. Uh, um, so, Amelia, what do you do with your? Um, what do you do with your? What are, What are you good at with your soccer? I'm not sure. Right. Spicy. She's a she's a go getter. She 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 won't take a back step. What, what I would what I would um really love to see is that you've got to remind yourself how good you are at doing what you do. All right, and so and and sometimes coaches don't tell that to their athlete as as much as they should, because the more the person knows how much effort that a person is putting into them and yes they'll try hard to do it but if but if the coach can express how well they're doing then it just gives smiles and it gives appreciation and confidence to that person so so if you can tell yourself how good you are do that all the time get get your mum and dad to pat you on the back and say well done you're doing well because if you're happy and smiling about playing soccer then you'll get better you will. Confidence is the number one thing. All right. Yeah, so, thanks. Harley, your mum keeps on telling me how good you are and how many how many sessions a week are you doing with soccer, and you absolutely love it. Look, you can see a smile on your face now because people are talking about you. I just love how you're just so happy and you want to get better. If you've got a mindset of wanting to wanting to wanting to do well, go ahead and do it. There's nothing stopping you. The only thing that's stopping you is yourself, you know. And at the moment, you're you're all doing very very well. All right. Thanks, guys. I Great. appreciate it. Thanks, Rod. Thank you very much. Cool. No all worries, right. John. See Have you guys. Thank you. See you, Dale. Okay. See you, Harley. Thank you. Bye bye. See you, Amelia.